Hello there and welcome to another episode of Regular Beer Reviews, where regular doesn't refer to the beer as being reviewed, but to the reviewer myself. I'm Jesse and I'm about to be reviewing a beer that I have had many, many times before. This is from Magic Hat and it is their flagship beer number 9. This is the first beer that I ever had from Magic Cat. Um, I've had several since then. I absolutely love Magic Cat now, but uh, this is going to be the first beer that I've ever reviewed from Magic Cat. Now, I did get this in their winter seasonal pack. Uh, I just picked up about a week ago, and um, this is the uh, first one I've had a chance to review, but um, I'm going to review um, all four from that, uh, that pack, so... Um, there's going to be some other Magic Cat reviews here and posted in the next couple days. Um, let's see here. This is, uh, as I just said, from the Magic Cat Brewing Company. They are out of South Burlington, Vermont. Um, beer Advocate gives this beer a 78, which is just okay, and that's with 3,683 ratings. Rate Beer gives it a 45 overall, with an 81 for the style, and the Bros give it a 74, which is just okay. It has an ABV of 5.1%. And, um, obviously the style is, uh, well, I say obviously because I know, and I didn't know it at the time, the style is a fruit beer. This beer is brewed with apricots, which I never knew the first time I had it, and, I mean, when I took a sip of it, it just, poof. I'm not a fan of fruit beers at all, but this one is just, just different enough from other ones to, um, where it's really refreshing, and I, uh, I do like it, but we'll get into that with the review. Let's see here. This is a descript from Beer Advocate. It says, a beer cloaked in secrecy. An ale whose mysterious and unusual palate will swirl across your tongue and ask more questions than it answers. A sort of dry, crisp, refreshing, not quite pale ale. Number nine is really impossible to describe because there's never been anything else quite like it. Um, yeah, it does say that on the bottle, not quite pale ale. From that um, quick descript that it just gives on the bottle there... You think, well, not quite pale ale. It's got to be similar to a pale ale. It's not. This is like nowhere near pa near pale ale. But uh, oh yeah, this beer also has uh, 20 IBUs according to um, Beer Advocate. But anyway, um, let's see here. Uh, let's. I'm gonna read what it says on the bottle here. It says the ancient ritual of brewing a distinctly rich and flavorful beer is a performance to behold. Our mysterious. Uh, melange of time-honored ingredients harmonized with chaotic chemistry, humble patience, and blind faith to create unique beers to share in the rousing company of kindred spirits. Cheers. And I love Magic Cat because they always have, their caps always say really cool shit. Um, it says, uh, seek malt, not fault. <laughs> and, it, and it's funny because, um, they always seem to rhyme most of the time. One time I, uh, opened one and it said, uh, it, all it said was it doesn't always have to rhyme, and uh, I laughed my ass off for ten minutes because, I mean, you'd have to drink a lot of Magic Hat beers to get that, but I thought it was really funny. But uh, anyway, going ahead and get this poured. You can see it uh, definitely has the appearance of a pale ale. It's a nice golden, dark, um, dark yellow, um, like a dark straw color, hazy. It's translucent, but it's certainly not really, it's not clear. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, very, very carbonated. There's a lot of bubbles streaming up. There's a nice, I'd say, half, half finger head. Um, slightly off-white. Very frothy. Really big bubbles. Um, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get a nose on this. Now, you can definitely smell the apricots in the nose. I mean, you can smell honey. There's like a white grape thing going on, maybe apple or white grape thing going on there. Very fruity in the smell. The malts are nice and bready, maybe the slightest bit of like a, a toffee malt or something. Very sweet, not really any hop character to speak of. Um, if there's any hop character in the smell at all, it's, uh, it's just, it, you could just contribute that to, to a very floral um, characteristic of, of the beer. I mean, it does smell floral, um, but it's just, again, just the honey, the apricots, you know, it's really sweet. So, um, go ahead and uh, jump into this. Oh, yeah. This is one 
I would, uh, n excuse me, I would define as a chick beer. But a guilty pleasure at that because this is a beer that I've had several times and I will probably have several more. It is a extremely refreshing. Super light mouthfeel. Nice and carbonated, but not overly carbonated. This doesn't leave you burping all day. I mean, it's, you know, it's certainly refreshing. If it's hot outside and you want, you know, something, you can grab, you know, a Budweiser or something. It tastes like crap. Or you can grab this, which is really refreshing, but it has um, a lot of character and is really, really tasty too. Now, um, at 5.1%, this is, is slightly, um, that's, I think Budweiser is like 5.5, five. so this is even more sessionable than that. I mean, you could put away more of these than you could a Budweiser, and they taste better. They'd be easier to put away, so it's very, very sessionable. I mean, I could have a ton of these, um, and I have. I mean, I've, you know, drank a six-pack of this before in, in an evening, so it's certainly, <laughs> excuse me, it's certainly possible, um, but the flavor is like, um, Excuse me. Really floral on the front end. It's floral. It's bready. It's sweet. And then the back end, you get it hit with that fruit. And it really does. It almost reminds me of, um, and, and I thought this the first time I ever had it, like fruit punch or something. When you have, like, um, like uh, the Hawaiian the Hawaiian punch, when you take a, like a, a sip, the, at the back end, that kind of pow, you know, the fruity flavors, that's what this leaves in your mouth. Not overly sweet, but really refreshing, really satisfying, really, really different for a beer. And I've had a ton of fruit beers that I could not stand. I've had tons of beers that are blueberry and raspberry, and, and I've had a lot of apple ciders, and cherry beers and I really don't like any of them but this is a beer I can get behind this is a really really good beer it's fruity but it's not overly fruity it's not overly sweet it's definitely still I would say a chick beer but it's a chick beer that you know I you know I like and uh, I'm not ashamed to admit I like it this is a good beer Is it my favorite style? Not by a long shot. But is it a good beer? Hell yeah. I'm going to give this beer an 8 out of 10. If you see Magic Hats, number 9, again, this is their flagship beer. Any seasonal variety pack from, and they do one every every season, they do four variety packs a year. Any seasonal variety pack uh, from Magic Hat that you see will have this beer in it. Um... Over the summer, they did do uh, an IPA tour where they had uh, several, I think like four or five IPAs that they did, and um, I believe they did have uh, variety packs with just the IPAs in it, so you couldn't, this wasn't in those, but um, any, um, you know, any any other time of year, this was in their fall seasonal, seasonal their uh, Night of the Living Dead um, pack, which I got and I loved, they some really good ones in there, the Deveiled. Um, Amber Ale, the, um, the Seance Saison, excuse me, and it had this, and then now the, the Winter Seasonal, which, um, again, I'm going to be reviewing some other beers from that pack. So, uh, Magic Hat's really good brewery. I mean, they're fucking awesome. If you see them, um, any, any beers from Magic Hat, pick them up, but definitely pick up the number nine. It's a great beer. Um, again, I'm going to give it an eight out of ten. Thanks for watching, and keep watching again in the future for more reviews. Prost.